HipFig Travel Channel offers DIY travel video guides for more than 25 cities in Asia, US, and Canada. If you like this video, then subscribe, give us a thumbs up, or a comment. Welcome to HipFig's video guide series on New Delhi. In this DIY video, we'll show you the Kutub Minar and Kutub Complex. We will share how to get there by the Delhi Metro Railway and what you see once you arrive. The Kutub Minar is a 73 meter high tower and is part of the Kutub Complex, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. To get to the Kutub Minar and Complex by Delhi Metro uh, Railway, take the yellow line to Kutub Minar Metro Station. The complex is about 2 kilometers from the metro station, so after exiting the station, it is recommended to take a rickshaw or cab for a more comfortable trip. You can also walk. If you choose to walk, follow the signs to Kutub Minar and walk northwest on NH148A. Then take a left onto Crescent Road. Another way to get to Kutub Minar is to take a tour, like the Delhi Darshan Day Tour, which is run by DTC, and it makes a stop at Kutub Minar. There's also a hop-on, hop-off bus service available called Hoho -Ho Tours. Once you get to Kutub Minar, you can purchase your tickets at the ticket booth across the street from the complex entrance in the parking lot area. If you are not an Indian citizen or a visitor of a Sark or Bimstek country, you will have to pay the foreigner entrance fee. The Kutub Minar and complex is open daily from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Before entering the complex, there is a security check. There is a separate line for men and women. You will pass through the metal detectors, then your bags will be checked and you may get frisked by security personnel. Once in the large complex, make sure to see the following. The Alaya Minar, an unfinished minar, which was to be the double the size of the Kutub Minar. Its construction was abandoned after the completion of its first story, which is 24.5 meters high, after the death of its constructor, Aluddin, in 1316, and it was not continued by his successors. Once you're finished, continue walking through the large complex. Walk through the series of arches to the tomb of Iltumish, the second Sultan of Delhi. Although in ruins, it still has the marble cenotaph placed in the center on a raised platform. The facade is known for its ornate carvings. The interior west wall has a prayer niche and is decorated with marble and Hindu motifs blended into Islamic architecture. Continue in the complex to the Kuwad Islam Mosque, which is next to the Qutub Minar. This mosque is the oldest surviving example of Gurd architecture and was constructed by demolishing earlier buildings in the area and built atop a raised and paved courtyard. You will see the Iron Pillar which dates from 375 to 414 AD and is a curiosity. The iron pillar is 7.21 meters high and was placed in front of a Vishnu temple complex. The estimated weight is 6,511 kilograms. No one actually knows why it was not removed when the Mughal rulers took over the complex area. The main feature of the Qutub uh, complex is the Qutub Minar, the tallest brick minaret in the world. The minaret is an example of early Afghan architecture, which later developed into Indo-Islamic architecture. The Qutub Minar is five stories and 72.5 meters tall and made from red sandstone and white marble. Each story has a balcony and tapers up from a diameter of 14.3 meters to a base at its base to 2.7 meters at its top. And don't miss Aladun Kilji's tomb and madrasa. You'll find his tomb at the back of the Qutub complex southwest of the mosque. As you leave, take a good look at the Alai Darwaza, the main gate and the first building in India to use Islamic architecture principles. This attraction will take an hour or more depending on your interest. You can combine with the Lotus Temple, which is located near the Outer Ring Road by Nehru Place. Happy travels! 
Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.